Welcome to the Strength for the Day podcast, which is a daily Bible study with Dennis Fountain. We hope this time together will be challenging, sharpening, uplifting, encouraging, and strengthening to your Christian walk. Thank you for joining us, and we pray you are helped through today's study. Hey, welcome to Strength for the Day. As we dive into another episode and wrap up uh, another week, of course, this episode dropping on Friday, on a Friday, and of course, uh, for our church family, I want to encourage you this Sunday, uh, our Missions Emphasis Sunday, kind of the last of uh, our four Sundays that we've been spending time on missions. We've got uh, Pastor Rick Adams. Um, He's pastored in Portland for... uh, a number of decades, been an incredible family friend to us. I know he'll be a blessing to you, to our church family, and so I want to encourage you to plan to be as a part, uh, to be a part of the service this Sunday as we wrap up our missions emphasis month. Well, for everyone, we are diving today into uh, Ephesians chapter number five, verse number twenty-two, and uh, we're going to read. I don't know how much we're actually going to cover today. Um, I really, I think we're going to. I think we'll get through all of it, uh, but I just want to, I want to kind of take our time. However, I will also say this isn't an extensive study on marriage. We're going to take about 10 minutes to do this. So let's dive in. Ephesians chapter five, verse 22, wives submit to your own husbands as to the Lord for the husband is the head of the wife as also Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so that wives be to their own husbands in everything. The first portion of this section that Paul writes, it is designated to the wife. Now, there are a lot of uh, good meaning pastors uh, and uh, good meaning Christians. I'll just say that there's a lot of good meaning Christians that dive into this and immediately are just they, they just say, you know, for you wives out there, you better submit to your husband. That means you are a subject unto him and you better come under his authority and all of that. Um uh, I'm not going to just say, well, they're wrong because I, I don't ever want to uh, assume motive, but we have to remember this is coming after a statement that Paul has just made. What was the statement that we covered in our last episode? Be filled with the spirit and allow the spirit to change your perspective. What's it going to change? It's going to change your perspective toward people. It's going to change your perspective toward the Lord. It's going to change your perspective regarding thanksgiving and praise. But also verse 21, it's going to change your perspective in your relationships, submitting one to one another in the fear of God. So we need to realize, remember that this wives submit to your husbands at your own husbands as to the Lord is following the challenge to be spirit led. So this is not just a command that for the wife, ladies, you need to submit to your husband, no matter the cost, no matter what's going on. Um, there, there is a lot of cases that I know that I've counseled a wife. You don't need to be uh, with with him right now. You need to separate from him. He is living ungodly. Uh, maybe the abusive situations and things like that. So we have to first rule out what Paul is not saying. He's not saying under any every circumstance, wife, it is your obligation to be under the authority of your husband, no matter what. Even as he, even if he's abusive and a jerk and this and that and all that. Paul is not saying that. Paul is, however, saying we need to understand that as the spirit leads and the husband is being spirit led, that the wife has a responsibility to be submitted to that leadership within the marriage and that leadership within the home. Now, men, we need to realize that the wife is given as a help me. That phrase, help me, it, it is as one to come alongside and to serve with. So the wife is instructed right here, just as Christ is subject, or excuse me, just as the church is subject to Christ, the wife is submitted to her husband. Now, submission, when even though the word used there um, in verse 24, just as the church is subject to Christ, so that the wives be to their own husbands, uh, even though the word subject is used, we need to know that submission 
is not subjugation. What does that mean? Submission does not mean slavery on every whim and every demand. Um, honey, clean the house today. Well, babe, I've been working all day. I don't care, clean the house, get it done. You're supposed to submit. No, that's just a jerk husband. <laughs> uh, that's, that's not a submission issue. That's just a husband that's a jerk, all right? So here's what we need to understand. The, the roles within the home in Ephesians chapter number five are given with the mindset that spirit-led living is going to be the king. So I'm going to be led by the spirit of God and that is going to impact my marriage. And so a wife who is led by the Spirit of the Lord is going to have a submissive spirit. I don't have to demand my way and be right all the time. But then how is it going to impact a husband? Well, notice, husbands, love your wives and uh, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. There's going to be from the husband a sacrificial love, a love that is selfless, a love that represents God's love for us. Now, does this mean that the husband is never to uh, um, submit to the wife and the wife is never to love the husband. No, that's not what it's saying. No, remember submitting yourselves, submitting to one another in the love, in the fear of God. So there's supposed to be submission both way. Again, it's living with deference. So the wife is deferring to the husband and loving the husband. And the husband understands, I'm going to love my wife like Christ loves the church, but I'm also not going to demand. I'm going to be one that lovingly leads, lovingly defers. And then Paul continues and says this, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any, any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. The idea here is all still on this theme of love. Christ loved the church and he cleansed the church. That, I mean, he sacrificed for the church for the cleansing and he wants to present the church glorious without any frail, without uh, any fallacies. He wants to present the church uh, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So ought men, husbands, to love their wives. This isn't just one thought and then a bunch of separate little things. It's all one thought. Men, love your wife and lead her in a spiritual, God-fearing way that wants the best for her. And then he summarizes that section by saying, or these verses by saying this, so husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church. We are members of his body, of his flesh and of his bones. For this reason, quoting from Genesis, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. Paul writes, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his wife as he love himself and the wife see that she respects her husband. As Paul writes about this, it's understanding really uh, spirit led marriage. A spirit led marriage is going to recognize that God is God is the one who completes our marriage. And so as I let the Lord lead my life, I as a husband am going to be loving and sacrificial and deferring. And as a husband, I'm not going to be demanding and I'm not going to be that, uh, that slave driver that says do because I said I'm, I'm not going to be that. Why? Because Christ is not that in my life. 
I'm going to want to be what Jesus is in my life. I'm going to want to be that in the life of my spouse. For the wife, she's not going to want to just demand her way and and have this angry countenance or be the one uh, that says, well, you just never understand me and and, uh, the argumentative tone. Why? Because Jesus isn't like that with us. You see, a lot of people want to just come to Ephesians 5 and just pull it out and say, listen, this is the application. But it all falls under being spirit led. Actually, the rest of the book of Ephesians leading up to the the ending where Paul closes everything has the idea of being spirit led, being led by the Lord. You know, when we're led by God, it's going to impact literally every relationship in our life. When I'm led by God, it impacts how I speak to my spouse. It impacts how I lead my kids. We'll see that tomorrow or in our next episode. It impacts, ladies, how you respond to your husband. It impacts the the deference that you give. Men, it impacts the service that you bring to the table for your spouse. It impacts how you love. Listen, when, when Jesus says that men ought to love their spouse even as he loves his own body, because no one's ever just hated their own body. No, I'm Dennis. You know that. You know what I did today? I ate lunch. Why? Because my I was hungry. My body wanted some food. So I got some food. Why? Because I love Dennis. Is that wrong? No. God created us to take care of ourselves and to love what he loves. You have value. He loves you and created you with value. And there's nothing wrong with you loving you. And and I'm not talking about this mindset of now just go out and love on yourself and buy yourself a new car every month. And, you know, we don't have the money for that type of stuff, right? I'm just simply saying this, when Jesus said, so ought men to love their wives, just like he, they love themselves, he's just kind of bringing this application. Paul, or the Lord through Paul is bringing this thought in. Love your spouse. Love those around you even. Now, this could even apply to those who are single. Love people around you like you love yourself. What does that mean? It means I'm going to give to others. I'm going to be kind to others. I'm going to be uh, 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 caring for the life of others. I'm going to care for myself, be kind to myself today. So I should do that with the lives of others. But again, all of this is a byproduct of being spirit filled, allowing the spirit of God to lead my life. It will change my approach to every relationship. To the married couples today, I would ask you dissect your marriage. Are you being led by the Spirit? Ladies, are you submitting with a spirit of deference and a heart of respect and love? Men, are you leading with a heart of love and deference? A heart that says, I'm going to put you first. And Jesus put us first. I'm going to put you first. And then for those of you that aren't married, is the uh, Spirit leading your life? Is that changing the relationships you have with people. God desires to use his Holy Spirit to help us grow and become like him in every single relationship. And so today, may we surrender to the Spirit of God and let it impact every single relationship. I recognize the last couple episodes and and today, as well as the next two, are going to be a little repetitive, but they all flow out of this thought that surrendering to the Spirit of God will impact the relationships of my life. I hope that would be a help, and I look forward to seeing you next week as we pick up in uh, chapter number six. Have a great day.